Hey YouTube, what's no good? He is the Reverend, and we're back with some more of that fresh art goodness. So, what do we got in store for you today? Well, today it's illustration 18 for day 18 of OC Tober 2020, where I did 31 illustrations in 31 days. Illustrations of original characters made by me or some of my friends, comrades, and fellow artists. This one right here is a fan art of an OC of a friend of mine, and it's also a callback of, uh, <laughs> of how goofy we were back in high school. This is an OC, um, a, a Sonic fan character OC, um, brought to you by my friend Sarah Ray, who is on Twitch right now, and does, um, does you know, you know, mixing of Vaporwave tracks, and also uh, is a gamer. A big fan of speedruns as well. So I'll drop a link in the description. Bam! There you go. <clears throat> Couldn't say it right the first time. <laughs> Sorry. And this is also this is uh, this is a little delve into how my mind worked back in like late middle school and early high school. <laughs> you know, back when Sonic wasn't necessarily getting as much crap as it is nowadays. I mean. I don't think people have been giving it crap lately, but still. Um, my friend Sarah had this um, idea since I think childhood of a of a, an OC. Uh, she named him Turbo. She had this idea. It was, it was like a it was like a combination of Sonic and Knuckles, like combined, like the quills down, kind of like Sonic's, but. Um, the nut, but got the spiked gloves like knuckles, but he also had like a hoverboard. I was down. I was trying to conceptualize some character designs of my own because I had this. Uh, I had a. Fa I was actually writing a Sonic fanfic at the time, one that I had no intention of ever actually sharing, but uh, at least not online. But it was. It was something. It was. I, I tried to be. I tried to do something a little expansive, and I tried to bring back characters that weren't being shown, as well as adding some new characters of my own. It was going to involve like entering an alternate. It was. It, it was. It was going to involve entering an, uh, an alternate universe. Like it, we would have. We would have the usual canon setting, but there was a. There would be an old. There would be an, an, a vengeful deity very similar to like chaos was in Sonic Adventure except instead of being like a being of like water this thing would be like a being of like earth uh, I think I named him Havoc and you know there was like a prophecy about uh, of it returning and gaining revenge on on chaos for something that might have happened way back when even if that it, even if it didn't happen in this particular universe, it happened in an alternate win or something like that. And while that the, while that upcoming tra uh, tragedy was coming, um, we had um, we have like Sonic and Tails would like come across some old data from the from the setting from Sonic Adventure Two: The Space Colony Arc. <laughs> One of the, another one of the prototype ideas that Robotnik, uh, J Professor Joe Robotnik had for like their ultimate life form idea. If anyone knows anything about Sonic Adventure 2 and Shadow the Hedgehog, both the character and the game, uh, you know that there were a few, you know, failed experiments before they had the proper, like, the proper components necessary to make uh, a life form that could actually be considered like an ultimate life form. The idea that I had was I was going to integrate Sarah's idea for the character Turbo by making him a one of the prototypes uh, for like a like a, a, a one of the first like hedgehog-like designs before Shadow was made. However, I also had this idea that. Um, this was a prototype idea that was scrapped a long time ago as already like no no way this was this going to work except a few other scientists and uh, 
Fitzgerald's granddaughter Maria had been working on, you know, trying to salvage this and then see if they could at least make some type of life form. If they can make this just happen first, if they can make this, if we could bring it to life, maybe they can speed up the process of making a, the real ultimate life form that would eventually be Shadow. But all the data uh, was on this this one big like green disc. And, uh, the, and what I had in the idea in the story was that um, Tails would end up discovering this disc and he would try to un like figure out what was on the disc because it looked very familiar. It looked like something that was on the arc um, based on handwritings and whatnot. Only for Eggman to have already sabotaged like Tails' computer and had like a virus on it. This doesn't make any sense. It really does not make any sense. This shows you how dumb I was back in high school. But I was going to go for it anyway because it's like, eh, you can't expect everything to make sense in, in Sonic Universe or any of it. So well, let's just make it happen anyway. <laughs> the idea was that Eggman's virus actually corrupted not only Tails' computer, but also was able to... Um, somehow manifest itself physically in like like the real world the virus would come out almost like a reverse grid man or something like the virus becomes a monster and comes out of the comes out of the the computer and but before it attacks anything before it does anything to the real world um, some type of substance was actually inside the disk it was like a, it was almost like artificial chaos or something, but it was green. It was some type of substance. It came out of the disc, leaked out of the computer, and just took the the, the virus monster and just, just 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 consumed it. And it transmogrified, and it ended up becoming Turbo. So it was like they, it's like they just needed that one component. It's almost like the people on the arc just needed one last component to make this thing work. And Gerald's own grandson, Eggman, would be like it was almost, almost, almost prophetic, almost poetic how he's the one who finishes, you know, finishes off this prototype with his data, and. Um, so we got two big like plot lines going on. This where like Knuckles is prepping the world for like this upcoming arrival of a deity named Havoc, while Sonic and Tails are trying to figure out what in the world is going on with this Turbo guy because he, as soon as he was you know as soon as he comes about, he's immediately on making a beeline rush for the Chaos Emeralds, but he doesn't explain what he's looking looking for them you know like for. I mean, he, doesn't, he doesn't explain what he's, what he's look, why he's looking for him. Um, and right when he, right when he's done forming up and like, or, you know, introducing himself to like the readers, that's when Eggman comes in. Because once the once the uh, virus was activated, he immediately comes in trying to finish the job and is about to have another battle with Sonic and Tails, only for Turbo to immediately just put the kibosh on that. Um, and much to Sonic and Tails' surprise, not only did Turbo just completely just just burrow through Eggman's machine, but it turns out that Eggman had a Chaos Emerald inside that machine, which is the reason, the only real reason why uh, Turbo even got involved in that fight in the first place. And then he up and vanishes, and he's just going on for the search. Um, and and the and he would slowly reveal the reasons why he's doing this. And why he doesn't really care who gets in his way and all this, uh, you know, just th that was like the main idea for Turbo. Um, I had a couple of, um, I had a, I actually had a, a trio of other characters uh, that would be working together to try to prevent what's going on with the whole dimensional thing, trying to prevent the coming of havoc. They were, they, they were doing stuff behind the scenes. And Eggman was going to have another, like, a new generation idea of, uh, of like, robots that he was going to be using. Like, the, the idea I had was, you know how in the original games, a lot of the Batniks he had were just robots with machine, like, with animals in them? 
he was going to start taking those animals and essentially roboticizing them like he did in the Saturday morning cartoons, except make them more cybernetic. Think like the quote unquote androids from the Dragon Ball Z series. And it would be something like that. They would look like normal animals, or the anthropomorphic animals like Sonic was, but they would have machine like enhancements. I was I was I, I was I was coming up with a bunch of ridiculous ideas and the question is how's I gonna make it all work? Um, which is probably one of the big reasons why it didn't go as far as I'd like to. It got to the point where it was just about to enter the alternate dimension and we were about to be introduced to Havoc. I think that's right when I stopped. Man, I, I, even, I swear I hate cliffhangers. And here I am talking about how I accidentally wrote a fanfic that stops at a cliffhanger. I hate it. I hate it. I really need to redo that. Put that on the to-do list one of these days. Am I ever going to finish it? Who the hell knows? I don't. But with that said, let's go ahead and wrap this up for today. If you like what I do, consider subscribing. And if you want to support this little project, remember I do commissions and have a Patreon. So until next time, take it easy, memento mori, and I will catch you all in the next one. Kill the feed.